Hello, welcome back to my workshop. Right, so I have a, uh, a project that will be upcoming at some point, hopefully, uh, when I get round to it, which is making this, which is a 40 ton arbour press made from an article, I won't be making it exactly like this, uh, from the May-June edition <coughs> of 1986, a uh, home, home shop machinist, I think that's right. Anyway, um, also... There was Fireball Tool did a similar sort of thing from uh, Problem Mechanics 1972, which is a big, uh, well, not that big, uh, but an arbor press made with a bottle jack. But part of that process would involve welding up very, very thick steel. Uh, well, I say very thick steel, quite thick steel for the home shop. Uh, this is 3 8 10 mil, um, and I thought, well, I'll get a bit of practice in uh, and just see that my world is up to the job. And while I was doing that, I thought, well, I'll just talk a little bit about world shrinkage. So um, what's going to happen is I'm going to put a world V down here and that's going to be molten metal. And then that metal that's fitting in there will freeze. And as it freezes, it will shrink. And as it shrinks, it will pull this from just under 90 degrees, I think it is. Let me just show you that. So we've got this to measure angles. Let me put that on there like that. Just close that up. I can show you. No, that's not quite right. I don't think so. No, that is definitely not right. Right, okay. We'll just put that right up on there. Eighty-nine point nine. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, almost ninety degrees. Um, I expect it to go to something like ninety-five degrees. Um, number of different things you can do to combat that. Um, the way I'm going to combat that in the actual build is this will be a box section. So there will be another two bits over here, and there will be a bar down the middle, and so the stresses will cancel each other out. In this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a big heavy tack there, there and there. When I've done that, that should pull out uh, a bit as it is and then I can bend it back the other way while it's just tacks to over compensate for that and then when I finally weld it, it will then should pull it back to roughly right. So let's just do that thing and what I'm just going to do is I am going to go and um, put on stuff so that you can watch the welding. Right, so got the door open for fresh air. We're going for um, 3.25 millimeter rods, which is roughly an eighth of an inch. I've got the that turn up to about 200, which I think. That turn up to about 200, which I think is about 120 or so amps. Actually, 210. So I think it's about 120 or so amps. Yeah, well. You soon know this, but uh, make sure you turn your mask on, folks.
Okay, so that's the tacks in place. Let's just quickly see how that looks. Now, these lumps of metal will end up horrifically hot because there's an awful lot of steel you need to get hot enough to be able to weld it. So let's just go and pop this on. Actually, I can't quite operate that completely. So turn that back on. Zero it out. Add a lump of wood back out. And that's calling me a liar. Where is it? Let's check. What was that measuring over there? Sugar. Now it's tacked on, the uh, magnets are a little bit irrelevant. Mm, it's still... Still 89 and a bit, so it hasn't moved yet. So let's just see what it does. Anyway, I shall carry on welding with it up because I need it to need the test well done. Let's check what the time is. You can feel the heat of that through the gloves. Okay, always remember that something in a welding shop will be outrageously hot. Let me just quickly... You can see the welds there. Right, I can essentially just... Uh, that back up.
that is red hot. That will take a lot of cooling down. Let me just quickly knock the slag off. Right, I clearly need to pretty up my welds a bit because that's not very good there. It's perfectly fine down there, undercut a bit. Let me just show you. Right, it's time to have a, a bit of a closer look at these welds. They're not good welds. Now, if we start down here, this is the last bit to weld. Uh, I was going round in circles, but frankly I was obviously going too fast because I managed to put a weld on there and a weld on there, which isn't connected in the middle, so that's horrible. These welds will do the job I probably want them to do, but these welds don't penetrate either. What we're going to do... Um, I think these welds were going too fast and not depositing enough heat and I also definitely, well I don't know about not depositing quite enough heat, what I certainly didn't do is put enough filler rod in there. And we certainly haven't got to the bottom of that weld down there. So what I'm going to do quickly is off camera I'm going to go and cut that there and cut that there and you'll see that these two bits then fall apart. And I'm also going to put a cut through there so that we can see what that weld looks like a bit more inside. So let me just cut that all and then I'll come back to you. Well that was interesting. Firstly, let me just try and remember which way round that went. Or that way round, that way round. There's the bit I cut off there. And uh, now that the slag is out of the way you can see the gap and you can also see that, as I said, I put a nice little bead down there and a nice little bead, not so big a bead there and not join the two. Uh, so that's clearly defective. You need to watch out for that because that's actually going to be quite hard to, to rectify. However, um, the other end, um, here is the other end and really that weld is, is it's not something you'd want to do for, for building because you do want to penetrate all the way through. But in actual fact that weld is all the way down to the bottom uh, and appears to be a reasonably good weld. Um, Still, notwithstanding the fact that I could have laid in uh, a bit more on top. Um, problem with going through at the bottom in this case is what this is going to end up being is a guide for a uh, bar. And you don't want to burst all the way through the bottom because then you'll obstruct the path for the bar. But that's actually a reasonably good weld there. So that's that uh, test weld. Uh, I've just remembered what I keep on doing wrong when I'm welding thick stuff which is to, or indeed any stuff, which is to go too fast. You've got to bear in mind you have to pick the right speed. So, there we go. And if I want to now I can get a bit more practice welding those back together again. That on the other hand uh, is not good. You can see it beginning there well, it's just not there. That's only held by the tack on the end. Having said that, that will be obviously still quite strong because it's quite a thick lump of steel. So, there we have it. That's my test well done. I think I've learnt what I need to learn. Uh, and thank you for watching. Please uh, like, share and subscribe. And uh, comments and questions, welcome.